Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. Today we're gonna show you how to make these slick and sexy Apple style titles. Wasn't that sexy? Yes, it was. But before we jump into After Effects, I just want to tell you that we have an amazing giveaway waiting for you at the end of the video. So make sure you stick around. Now, let's jump in. So I have my project open. We stripped away all the titles. We've used footage from Artgrid and we used music from Artlist. I want to show you the clean edit and I want you to notice all the movements and cuts. So let's take a look. So let's start with the first title and the first technique. So this is a simple mask in and out. We're going to start with our title. You want to do it from the center, so center text. Let's create the text box, some shots. Let's scale it up right here. So always set your anchor point to the middle and that will definitely save you a lot of trouble down the road. If you want to know if you're centered, you have this title action safe and you have this cross right here. So you can bring it right here. We have movement from left to right with this astronaut. So we want to mask in the title from left to right and mask it out from left to right as well. We'll go with the mask. Actually, I'll create something with the pen tool and I'll do something like that. More of a cross. We definitely want this mask more feathered. So let's go like this. Let's double click it and put it like that. Yep, that looks good. It also gives us a nice spacey look it goes well with the footage that we have here in the background. So now we just need to create the movement with the mask. So to open all the mask attributes, all you need to do is double click M on the keyboard. So we have the mask path and this is what we need to animate. So I'll click the stopwatch here and I'll create the first keyframe. I'll take the mask from here. Here is where my animation needs to be finished. So let's double click the mask and we'll do a full out mask. Now, this is how it looks. Select my keyframes by clicking the F9. That will make my keyframes easy ease, which means the motion of the animation would be smoother. We want it a bit slower. So all we need to do is create a bigger gap between these two keyframes. So pushing this keyframe further than the first one will create a longer animation. I think we're going to feather it a bit more. Great. So this feels a lot better. Basically, all I need to do now that I've created the movement of the mask that I wanted to do is just duplicate this specific title and just type in something else. So by Clicking Control D, that will duplicate my title. So the key for creating these type of titles is simplicity. First of all, you need a clean, good looking font. There are great free options on Google Fonts. Uh, we linked it in the description below. So you can go in there and look for the fonts that you like. Specifically here at Artlist, we are using the railway font and this is what we've used in the video. Now, the second thing is matching the movement of the title to the footage and to the rhythm of the music. If you have a specific shot that goes from left to right, maybe use a small animation to your text that goes from left to right. And you can see how it all comes together in the end. 
And the last thing is to use different keyframes and working with null object to create small and simple movements. Um, and by the way, if you're enjoying this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel with that notification bell on to never miss another video like this one. Tons of value and more videos coming your way. So here we have the footage cutting to the beat. So let's see that. Excellent. So basically, we just want to put one word for each frame and that's going to work very well with the edit. And you can see also that we have pretty abstractive footage, except for this powerful shot that we want to leave clean. Okay, now that I've built the title sequence, I want to start animating it. So let's see it without the animation. Great. So here's a fun fact regarding how fast can you make your titles. So the human eye can read a word in 0.3 seconds. So that's all you need to actually put on screen your specific words. I'm going to definitely scale everything. So all I need to do is select all my titles, click S on the keyboard. That will bring up the scale parameter and I can just scale everything up. Yeah, that looks good. So now I want to create small scale up movements for each title. And basically I need to create it for only one title and just duplicate that movement to each of those titles. So let's bring up the scale parameter. So I'll take our first keyframe and I'm going to push it a bit forward because this is our final uh, size that we want the title. And we're going to just scale this title down. You don't want to go all of the way to zero. You just need small movements to give that impact. So let's go back to 100. So let's see the movement. Okay, that's pretty cool. But it stops a bit abruptly and we want to ease this movement more. So I'm going to select the keyframes and I'm going to click F9 and I'm going to do the easy ease for these specific keyframes. Now let's see the movement. That looks better. I know it's a bit hard to see, but we can make it even smoother. Select my scale parameter right here and I'm going to go into my graph editor. So I have the movement here and I want to play with the speed of the movement. I can choose the graph type and now we have the value graph, but I want to play with the speed graph. This graph is a representation of the speed of the movement. So here the movement is in top speed. So each one of these dots is actually the keyframe. And when I start toggling this point, I can see the graph moving. Now think about this as a slide. Now, if you're going to go down this slide, you're going to go fast and here you're going to start going slower because the curve is more round. So basically, I want to take this all the way because I want the title to be fast going in and to slow down by the end of the animation. We can make this more noticeable by just clicking this keyframe and toggling this point backwards. So now we are starting super fast and we're slowing down by the end of the animation. If I'm going to toggle this and I'm going to push it forward, now the animation is longer. So let's go frame by frame so you can see how the movement is very abrupt from here to here. But here we have the graph slowing down. So here you're going to see the rest of the movement slowing down. So playing with the speed graph can make a lot of difference in your animations. Great. So now that we've created the animation and we've played with the speed graph for this specific title, we can copy this movement to each of our titles. So let's click on scale, 
copy the parameter, go to this title. Let's do the same thing to all of our titles. Everything looks in place. Let's play it. Excellent. Now here, I think we can add another movement of it scaling down just to make this more interesting. So let's do another keyframe here and scale it down. So you can see straight away, this made this more interesting. You can add more interest by creating another null object. But here I have two different groups of titles. So you want to create um, one controller to this group and another one for this one. So let's do another null object. And now let's parent these titles to our first null object and create a scale up movement just to give this more interest. And we're going to do the same thing to this. And now let's see our first six seconds of titles. So here we have one shot, which is a grid of Eclipse from ArtGrid moving up. We have our titles and they're on the beat. So naturally we're going to do an animation that is from bottom to up. So let's open up the position by clicking P on the keyboard. And we also want the opacity, so we're going to click T on the keyboard together with shift and that will give me only these two attributes. So this is where I want my title to actually finish the animation. So I'm going to create a keyframe here and I'm going to go backwards and I'm going to create another keyframe, but I'm going to play with the Y axis. So basically I've created an animation from up from downwards to upwards. But I also want this title to stop and then I want it to fade away going upwards. So I'm going to create another keyframe here and I'm going to play with the Y axis again, but this time I'm going to take the title upwards. Let's push this keyframe here and we want to ease everything. So F9 on the keyboard. And like I've said before, we need to open the speed graph just to give this a smoother motion. So we want this to ease more in with the animation. We'll start fast because we're going to fade it later. Expand the gap between those keyframes. It will take more time for the title to finish the animation. Let's try to uh, fade this title in. So this is my first keyframe. We're going to push it forward. And this we're going to go with zero. Push this animation a bit forward and create keyframes for the opacity and fade it out. Let's expand the gap here. And let's go back into the graph and make this a bit more smoother. So we want this movement to start slower. So try to imagine you're climbing a hill and it's going to take more time if I'm going to make the curve steeper. And here I'm actually going to leave it as it is. I don't want this animation to finish and this animation to start. I want it to be parallel to each other. So I'm going to take these two attributes and I'm going to copy them and I'm going to paste them to this title. If I'm going to push this title and I'm going to give this animation more time, now we've created a sort of a push effect from one title to the other. So let's see it in real time. 
so we can do this with the other titles. So like we did a scale in with the null object, we can just do a small movement on the Y axis. Let's select these, parent to the null, and give this some movement with the position. So basically, we want a bit of movement and we're going to spread the animation across the titles. And now we're going to have a continuous movement. And what we can do here is just a cut to this footage title getting bigger. Let's bring in the scale. And we're just going to go a few frames forward. And just give this a pop like that. Let's ease it and let's see how it feels. Excellent. One thing which can make a lot of difference in the feel of your titles is motion blur. You can just select all the titles that you've done up until now and click here and that will activate the motion blur for all the titles. You also need this to be selected and let's see the last uh, title sequence we did. You can see how it smears the title according to the movement. If you want to make the motion blur more blurry or less blurry, you can do that by playing with the shutter angle, which you can find on the composition, composition settings, advanced. The higher the shutter angle will be, the more blur you'll have. Let's take this down because I actually like to work with less of a motion blur. Let's say 90. Yeah, that works better. This animation, I just copied and paste the animation from here. And we have here uh, some beautiful footage that uh, integrates well with, the, with this title. Now here we have a push in with a small pan to the right. And this guy is rigging up the camera and he's pushing it from left to right. I've divided this title into two. But in the end of the animation, it's going to be in one title. This title right here will reference how the title should end up looking like in terms of position in the frame. So let's start animating. We want to scale it. This is the end movement. So it should be scaled in at first. So let's say like this. Let's easy ease the keyframes go into the speed graph and here I don't want it that fast but I do want it to go in pretty nicely so let's check it maybe the movement is a bit too much so let's just reduce the scale yeah what we want to do is take the word top push it left and that will reveal the word cinematographers. So we need to expand the title right here. And let's put up the position attribution. So the animation should start from around here. So this is our first position. And now is actually the time to put my reference title because I know where I want the movement to end according to the reference title. So we're going to put it up. And now we're going to take the position of the word top to my reference title. So we do want this animation to end here because this is where we're going to reveal the word cinematographer. Here we have our scale down and I don't want the, the movement to stop. So I'll take the keyframe and I'm going to parallel it to the scale movement. And now we're going to ease it in, play with this also with the speed graph. And here 
I don't want it to start fast. I actually want it to start slow because it's parallel to the scale movement. And I also don't want it to abruptly uh, stop at the end of the animation. So doing that, that's what's going to happen. But if I'm going to take this point further into the middle, now we have a situation where we're starting slow, increasing the speed and slowing down again. Okay, so you feel how we have the push in and the scale down together, that works well. And now this is going to move left but this guy here on the footage is going to push the camera right. And that's what's going to happen with the word cinematographer. So basically what we're going to do is let's reveal the word cinematographer and let's reveal again our reference title for the position. And now we're going to put the position attribute for the cinematographer. Let's do a keyframe. And let's start with our end position for the title, just to see it more clearly. Okay, that looks great. Now, basically, we can get rid of the reference title. We don't need it anymore. We have our position. And we want this animation for the uh, cinematographer to end uh, not that long after our top, our word top is finishing its animation. So. Let's take this title and put it from left to right. Let's get rid of the word top right now just to see the animation for the cinematographer. So it's going from left to right. Let's ease the movement. So we want an effect that the word top reveals the word cinematographers. So we can do that by just creating a white shape layer just like that over the cinematographers. And let's bring it on top of our word cinematographer. And now you need to toggle switch. So by choosing the word cinematographers and giving it this attribute, um, basically you're saying that wherever there's white with the shape layer, this is where we're gonna see the title. So now we have the shape layer right here so we can see the whole title. But the second that the title is starting to go left, it's actually going outside the white box, the white shape that we've created. And now it's being cut because there's no white solid right here. So we need to move this shape layer according to the word top. Now let's toggle the clock watch for the positions for the shape layer. We're going to follow the word top like that. Now we just need to go and do some small adjustments. And now we've created an effect that the word top reveals the word cinematographers, just so you won't feel that straight, unpleasant line of the borders for the shape layer. So just adding some motion blur to the shape layer itself will give you a nice, smooth border line. Excellent. So basically you can see the shadows in the footage going from left to right. So this is why we are doing this simple animation of word after word, sort of like word popping from left to right around the world. And that is super simple to do. Take the sentence, write it down, and then duplicate it three times because you have three different words here and mask out each of the words from each of the duplicate layers. I do want to give them more interest. So I've created two different null objects. This null object will make the sentence going from left to right. In the beginning of the animation, I'm going to parent the whole sentence to this null object. And now I'm going to have a small movement to the right and what I've created is another null object and I've parented the uh, small movement null object, which is this one, to that null object. And that null object is basically doing a fast motion to the left with this guy punching the air from right to left. So that's what's going on right here. So now we have those words popping in one, two, three. We have a subtle movement from left to right. And then we have a fast movement from right to left. 
So the only thing that isn't that smooth here is how the titles are just disappearing out of the frame. We're going to take those three different layers, which is the sentence, and we're going to pre-comp them. And of course, we need to parent the pre-comp to the null again. So there's a cool effect called linear wipe. And you can apply it to the composition. And now basically what it does, it just wipes out the sentence, the layer, the pre-comp. So we just need to keyframe it that it would be together with this movement. And maybe we'll easy ease it. Another great animation technique you can do to give more dynamic to your title sequences is playing with the tracking. You can open here the text and you have this play button near to the animate. So clicking on that and clicking on tracking will open this specific animator which you can play with. And what it does is it spans the gaps between each letter in your title. And of course, you can animate this. So what we can do here is start a bit with a closed gap and animate the spreading of the gaps and then closing back up. So closing like that. So now we've created this animation where we have the spreading of the title and then it closes up again. And of course, we want to ease everything in. And let's go to the graph, the speed graph, and we need to be on the attribute to play with it. And I specifically wanted to start really fast and then slow down and then start closing slowly and speeding up to full speed the end of the close. So let's see how it looks. Excellent. Of course, adding motion blur will make it even cooler. And this is a bit weird because the letter D here doesn't move. But what we can add is a bit of a scale down to the uh, title with this folding back animation. So let's do that. This works well. Maybe that's a bit too much. I would do less of a scale down. And just to make everything a bit more smoother, maybe we'll do a small, small fade out. So let's add the opacity in and go all the way to 50. This should work well. Let's see that. And what we can do to add more life into this animation is use this null object as a controller for another scale. We're going to do just a scale up from 100 all the way to 120. Let's see how it looks. Of course, we need to parent at the beginning of the animation to the null. Let's see how it looks. Yep, that looks great. Another cool technique to use your title sequences as transitions is actually creating movement on a cut point of your footage. So here we have another title transition we did right after the uh, tracking animation. So we have the word flying in, moving to the side, pop, pop, and then we have here a cut point and this title is just going from right to left. And basically all we need to do here is 
take all the movement that we did and pre-comp this specific sequence and basically just create another position and make this whole title sequence go pretty subtle, not a big movement. Let's play with the graph. So here we just have those two titles going on top of each other, which is okay. All we need to do is the linear wipe. Basically, it needs to wipe out the entire sentence. Let's feather it a little bit just to give that more of a nice feeling. So let's see this transition in real time. So what you've done here is motivated the footage transition with your title sequence. So this is our last title sequence. Uh, we're going to learn two things here. The first thing will be a title flying into the screen. And the second thing would be a counter with numbers. So this is our titles up to 8K. So we want the numbers to go up all the way to 8K and fly into the screen and pass the camera. So first of all, let's do the counter. So we have the title right here and I have a reference title and I'm going to tell you exactly why, because we need to separate the letter K from the numbers going up. So I have a reference title and then I'm going to have the letter K separately and we're going to parent the two together so they could move in the same time in the same way. So to make the numbers go up, basically you need to go into the effect panel, slider control, drag it onto your title and now open this up and you can open the text box and what you're going to do is click Alt and while you're clicking Alt, you're going to click on the source text stopwatch and that will create an expression. We're going to open the effects up and we're going to open the slider control and then we're going to parent the expression from our source text to the slider control. Okay, so now we have the expression and basically if I'll start moving up and I'll try to animate this. So basically this is what happens. We don't need and want those dots. So to fix this problem, all you need to do is go into the expression and type in math dot round open parentheses, close parentheses. Now we're going to put this expression down in the description below so you won't have any troubles. And now we can animate our numbers going up by using the slider control. So we want this to start at one and go all the way up to eight. And we want this animation to go across all of this. Let's easy is the animation. And to make this soothing to the eye, you can go into the speed graph. And play a little bit with the speed. Okay, so we did the counter up. Now we need to make this title fly into the camera and actually also help us with the transition right here from this footage to this footage. So because we've parent the counter up to the letter K, all we need to do is actually play with the letter K. Now to create this effect, you'll need to actually make those two layers 3D, just like that. Now to do that, all you need to do is play with the Z 
axis on the position. And this is how it looks. So I'm going to do a keyframe here and a keyframe here. And I'm going to move the position and boom. Flew straight to the camera. Let's ease this in. Let's play with the graph. So we want this to slowly fly into the camera and then just pick up the paste. Okay, it's a bit too fast. Maybe we can just do this across the whole counter up. So it starts slowly, like in the graph, and flies into the camera. Let's see how it looks with the motion blur. One, two, three, four, five, boom. So that's it. That was the last title sequence. Basically, all you need to do is use a clean and good looking font. Keep it simple, short and sweet animations based on the movement of your footage and on the rhythm of the music. So keep it simple, keep it sweet, and you'll see how you'll get beautiful looking Apple type motion graphics. So after all of that, let's see the final product. So that's it for this video. If it helped you out, don't forget to slap it, slap that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel with that notification bell on to never miss another video from us. And don't forget to check out the download link for these beautiful titles that we've animated together. Link is in the description below. So go ahead, check it out, play with it. You can create different variations of these titles. So. Check it out, link in the description. And by the way, if you like the footage and music you've seen in this video, you can find it in ArtGrid, our unlimited stock footage platform, and on Artlist, our music licensing platform, both linked in the description below. And let's talk about that giveaway. Three lucky winners will win three Artlist shirts and three Artlist hats. All you need to do is comment down below, what do you want us to talk about next? Here's the winner from our last video's giveaway right over here. Congratulations to you, my friend. Until the next time, stay creative. <clears throat> <clears throat>